Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is a lecture in which we are going to study about the diameter of the tree. And we would have a look at how we can find the diameter of a given tree. So let's start the lecture. So what is a diameter of a tree? So diameter of a tree is defined as the longest path between any two nodes in the tree. So suppose this is the given tree then the longest path you can see starting from node 1 to any of the node is only of length 3 so 1 to 7 1 to 5 or 1 to 6 all are of length 3 and uh, the distance is measured in terms of edges so to go from node 1 to node 7 you need to traverse three edges but the diameter of the tree is of length 4 uh, that is from either from 7 to 5 or 7 to 6 so 7 5 and 6 all you can consider as endpoints of the uh, diameter you can consider 5 as one of the endpoints of uh, diameter then 7 would be another end you can consider 6 as one of the endpoints of diameter then 7 would be another end if you consider 7 as one po uh, one endpoint then 5 and 6 would be one of the endpoints of uh, the diameter so 5 6 and 7 all are candidate uh, endpoints of diameter so the question is how you can calculate uh, diameter of the tree you can simply calculate diameter of tree using dfs n times what you can do is each time you choose a root and then run a DFS to calculate the farthest node from it and then each time just update your maximum so for example suppose I chose node 1 to be root then I run a DFS to find the farthest node the distance of the farthest node that would come out to be 3 so I updated my maximum to be 3 now I started DFS from node 2 and then farthest node can be 7 5 or 6 which is at distance 2 so our maximum would be 2 again then I would choose node 3 and run a DFS again the farthest node is of length 3 so maximum would be 3 same goes for node 4 but as soon as we start DFS from node 5 and find the farthest, uh, far farthest distance node then the distance would come out to be 4 and hence the maximum would be updated to 4 and then we would run for 6 and 7 and the max would be 4 and hence we can print it so since there are n nodes and for a tree the dfs runs in a uh, linear time that is big of n time and we have to run the dfs in n times n times because of each node so the overall complexity of the algorithm would be n square so the question is can we improve upon the time complexity of the algorithm so the answer is yes a better approach requires only two dfs not n dfs so the approach is take any arbitrary node as root and run a dfs to find the farthest node and let that node be x so what you have to do choose any node as root and run a dfs and find the node which is at uh, the which is at the highest distance from the root let's say that node is x then run a dfs from node x this time and find the maximum distance and then that, that maximum distance would be the diameter so let's understand this again choose any node as root and find the farthest node from the root suppose the uh, suppose node x is the farthest node now again we would run a dfs but this time the root would be node x now we would find the maximum distance from root x and that maximum distance of any node from root x would be diameter uh, to to make things more clear let's take an example and then we will go for a formal proof uh, suppose you chose a node node 2 as the root 
and then you run a DFS. So the farthest node from root are five, six, or seven. You see, all these three are the candidate endpoints. So if you run a DFS from node one, you would either get five, six, or seven. And then if you run a DFS from any of these nodes, then the farthest node would be the other end of the diameter. Now suppose we didn't uh, run starting DFS from node 1. Suppose we took node 4 as a starting node and then run a DFS from here. So if you take node 4 as starting root, then the farthest node from node 4 is 7, which is at distance 3. Now again we can see node 7 is actually one of the candidates of endpoints. So if you run in the next time using 7 as root then the farthest uh, the maximum distance you would get would be the diameter of the tree. You can see if you choose any node as a root node uh, the farthest node or the, the node the farthest node that you would get is actually one of the candidates of endpoints of diameter. Now let's go for the formal proof. So the proof can be given the proof can be given in two different cases. Case one is that the root that you choose in first DFS actually lies on the diameter of, of the tree. And the other case of course is when the root does not lie on the diameter of the tree. So let's prove for case one. Suppose the root that you choose in DFS one lies on the diameter. And the farthest node that we get from root to y, uh, sorry, the farthest node that we get from root r is node y. So what we have to prove is that node y is actually one of the candidates of diameter. Or you can say uh, node y is actually one of the endpoints of the diameter. We would prove this using a uh, contradiction. So we have to prove that node y is actually one of the endpoints of diameter and suppose to prove this let's assume that the farthest node y is not one of the endpoints of diameter uh, since we are pro proving this using uh, contradictions so you all know how contra uh, proof by contradiction works first we assume the uh, whatever we have to prove we assume that that is wrong so here we assume that the farthest node y that we gave uh, that we get after dfs running a dfs from node r the farthest node is not one of the endpoints of the diameter and the di actual diameter is this node v to node u this is actual diameter and this is a case where root lies on the path of the diameter now since r lies on the diameter and y is not one of the endpoints of diameter as we can see endpoints of diameter are v and u so now uh, since v u is actually the diameter then distance from v to r have to be greater than distance from r to y and distance from v to uh, sorry u to r have to be greater than r to y basically v r and u r both both the distance have to be greater than uh, r y reason uh, because this v u is actually diameter which is the longest path in whole tree so v, if r v or r u any of the path r v or r u if any any one of these two are smaller than r y then that would not be the diameter because then that would uh, then v u won't be diameter because v u won't be the longest distance suppose if v r is smaller than r y then diameter have to be this because this is smaller so we can neglect and the di diameter would be this of course but since u v is diameter hence the distance R V and R U have to be greater than the distance R Y. It follows from the fact this thing R V is greater than R Y and U R greater than uh, R Y. This follows from the fact that U V is diameter. But if this holds, then 
it gets us to a contradiction that R y, y is the farthest node from R. So you see what is happening. The diameter is V u and we have to uh, we have assumed that R uh, node y is not one of the endpoints of diameter. Hence uh, y is not one of the endpoints of uh, diameter and we are having node u and v as the endpoints of diameter. Now if u v is diameter then v r and u r have to be greater than r y. If that is true then y uh, this leads us to a contradiction that y is actually the farthest node from r. Since v, v and u both are at more distance from r than y hence y cannot be the farthest distance farthest node from r which is a contradiction and hence the contradiction is occurring because the assum assumption that we made this assumption is wrong and hence uh, y is actually one of the endpoints of diameter if you are having difficulty to understand this just go back and look at how prove by contradiction works so this is how uh, case 1 we can prove easily. Now for case 2 when the root does not lie on the diameter. So uh, we have chosen x node x to be root and then diameter is uv again and as we can see root x does not lie on the path uh, uv and the farthest node from x is y. Now case 2 is left to you as an exercise. Try to prove this fact no matter if, if it takes 2 days or 3 days or 4 days doesn't matter. If you don't try it you won't learn from it. Uh, the more you try to do things in algorithms like graph theory, dynamic programming, greedy algorithm the more you learn. If you, if you only, only be dependent on videos believe me you won't learn as much as you can learn by doing it yourself that is why case 2 I am leaving as an exercise to you and you are free to use Google you are free to use uh, stack overflow you can get answers there or stack dot mat dot stack exchange whatever you want to use just use it or you can also use books of course just try to find uh, just try to prove the second case where root does not lie on the diameter and it is not like uh, okay you can leave it uh, you know this is right that is why I am teaching you uh, that is a good point but that's also a foolish point to make if you won't prove things you, you would see that you won't learn as much as you can see uh, by proving things uh, you can learn as much by proving things the reason is uh, when you prove things you go deeper into the insights of why this algorithm actually works. If you have only learned and learned how to uh, apply the algorithm and you are able to solve some problems, it doesn't mean that you have uh, a very good knowledge of that algorithm. The problem setter still would be able to make some problems which you won't be able to solve if you don't have insights of, of the algorithm and if you have no idea that how algorithm works and on what grounds the algorithm was built and on what basis the algorithm is correct you won't be able to solve the higher degree uh, uh, higher complexity problems of uh, of a particular algorithm so it would be better if you try to understand the problem deeper so just try to solve this thing try to prove case 2 and try to learn why uh, this algorithm works the 2dfs algorithm works so overall algorithm is this you choose any node as root runner dfs find the farthest node the farthest node x take that as root this time and run a dfs again this time whatever is the maximum distance you can get from x to any other node that distance is your diameter so in the next video i'll be solving a problem to show that this algorithm works and of course this works we have pro proven case one and case two you are going to prove so yes this algorithm works so thank you guys for watching and yep keep coding and good luck for case two thank you